all living creatures on this planet that engage in sexual reproduction must solve a very basic problem. How to avoid doubling the amount of genetic information passed on to the next generation? Meiosis is the answer. Imagine some organism. Let's call it Plastigo. It contains only one cell and needs only four genes to live. In the absence of sexual reproduction, one could imagine that to reproduce, it simply needs to duplicate its chromosome and then divide in two. This type of division happens all the time throughout life in all living tissues. It is called mitosis. But if Plastigo was conceived through sex, it has received one chromosome from its father and an equivalent one from its mother. Here you see that the versions of the two middle genes that came from the mother are different than those that came from the father. Such a plastigo is called a hybrid. But we can easily imagine that the two chromosomes are the same, in which case the plastigo is called a pure line. In either scenario, the genetic information is duplicated, and the cell is said to be diploid and the number of chromosomes it contains is 2n. Humans are diploids, and 2n is 46 chromosomes. Corn is also a diploid, and 2n is 20 chromosomes. If Plastigo is to reproduce sexually, it needs to meet a partner to make babies with. But that's not enough. Each parent, Plastigo, must only contribute one chromosome to the new cell they'll create together. Each parent cell thus needs to divide, and the two chromosomes must be separated. This type of division is called meiosis, and it generates reproductive cells that are said to be haploid, and which contain 1N chromosomes. In humans, reproductive cells, sperm or eggs, contain 23 chromosomes. 1N is 23. In corn, reproductive cells, also called sperm or eggs, contain 10 chromosomes. 1N is 10. So, meiosis divides the number of chromosomes in two. What's the big deal? Well. The whole point of sexual reproduction is to make sure that if our children resemble us, they are in fact different from us. And here, meiosis achieves something extraordinary. Prior to the separation of the homologous chromosomes, genes that they carry can swap positions. This process is called recombination. Recombination is the central purpose of sexual reproduction. Without recombination, the reproductive cells will contain chromosomes that have the same arrangement of genes as the parent. They're called parental. But with recombination, the reproductive cells will contain chromosome with a different arrangement of genes than the parent. They're called recombinant. Reproductive cells are, of course, produced in sexual organs. Ovaries and testes in humans, and carpals and stamens in flowering plants. In most flowering plants, sexual organs reside together in one single flower, but not so in corn. The sexes are separated. Male flowers form the tassel at the tip of the plant, and they will shed pollen which contains haploid sperm cells. Female flowers will form ears on the lower section of the plant. 
each silk on an ear can receive one pollen grain, which will send its sperm cells to the unfertilized egg, which is also haploid. Meiosis, as a mechanism that promotes genetic diversity in every individual progeny, poses a challenge to farmers that obviously want to produce plants with consistent characteristics. This is where plant breeding comes in. By selecting for specific traits, pure lines can be bred that produce only one kind of sperm or eggs, no matter how much recombination takes place. For some crops, this is the end of the story. But for other crops, such as corn, two different pure lines are crossed to produce hybrids. And such hybrids are by far more productive and more vigorous than their parents. In this case, meiosis makes it impossible to preserve the optimal combination of genes when hybrids are crossed. And hybrid varieties must be produced by crossing pure lines every year. So, this is the story of meiosis, an amazing mechanism that makes us so similar to our parents, and yet so different. It is also the biological foundation of falling in love. This is true for us, and maybe this is true for seeds.